Opinions and ideas expressed in the following Moraine Valley Broadcast Channel recording are those of its creators and do not represent the views of Moraine Valley Community College. Good morning. This is the Rush Hour Renegade. I'm your host, Matt Kendrina. Today, my three guests are... I'm Selena. I'm Jessica. And I'm Kate. Today, we're going to talk about the Fight for 15. I support the Fight for 15 because wealth inequality in the U.S. is like no other modern country along with the fact that unionization rates are dangerously low. I think change needs to come. My biggest problem with not raising the minimum wage is wealth inequality. The top 1% of Americans has 40% of of uh, of all of our nation's wealth, which which to me is nuts. I mean, the CEOs are making 380 times more money than their average employee. 380. Just to put that into perspective, the average employee, that means, must work an entire month just to make the same amount that the CEO does in an hour. I mean, you can't say that they aren't being greedy. What do you guys think? You know, I I kind of agree with you. Like, I support the Fight for 15 movement because all low-wage workers shouldn't live in poverty and there will be more money available in the U.S. budget after a minimum wage increase. I support fast food workers getting the full pay raise and the right to unionize because unemployment won't be an issue. Like, I totally get what you're saying, how, like, they have all the wealth and that's not fair. Like, it's not right that the workers are paid so little they can't afford to live above the poverty line. American taxpayers are subsidizing the people who work and need public assistance because the business they work for doesn't pay them enough to live on. In Ken Jacobs' editorial, Americans are spending $153 billion a year to subsidize McDonald's and Walmart's low-wage workers. He describes working families that live in poverty, like Terrence Wise, Ebony Hughes. He works 38 hours a week, two jobs, and he still relies on public assistance. She's working as a home care worker, and her and her daughter still have to have public aid just to get by. Like, it's just not fair. That's right, Selena. Raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour will lift thousands, out, thousands of workers out of poverty, majority of whom are women, a lot of them being single, single mothers, and people of color. By raising the minimum wage, this would definitely increase the workers' efficiency and a huge reduction in the employee turnover, making it easier to recruit and retain workers, which is always important trying to maintain a successful business. Paying workers more... Paying workers more would really only raise prices by only a few cents, if even that. These huge corporations, such as McDonald's, reckon billions of dollars a year and have more than enough money to pay their workers $15 an hour. I support the fight for 15 because this will get millions out of poverty by increasing the wage the workers will not be laid off and we would have more money in the U.S. budget. Um, I think that places like McDonald's and other large corporations may be able to afford a minimum wage of, let's say, $15, but... What about the mom and pop shops, your local grocery stores, and even smaller businesses? If minimum wage is uh, raised across the board, many smaller businesses who may not be able to afford that will have no choice but to lay off some of their workers. It might help those who work at larger corporations get out of poverty, but it may push those who work at smaller business into or raise the unemployment. I support the fight for 15 because low wages are not unique to just minimum wage and those who are underpaid, although in some cases I do, however, oppose the fight for 15 because with raised wages may come inflation and unemployment. Well, Jess, in 1968, the minimum wage was $1.60 per hour. If it had kept up with income growth, a distribution, overall it would now be $21.16 per hour, which it's not. You know, after inflation rising, I don't think it's going to be like a totally effect if it were to happen. Um, the state and federal government would actually save more by increasing wages to $15. In um, Berkeley's Labor Center's academic study, the current low wages are costing U.S. taxpayers $152.8 billion each year. Public assistance programs include Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, Temporary Aid to Needy Families, food stamps, you know, all that. Low wages affect several op- occupations, too, leaving fast food workers, child care providers, home care workers, and adjunct college faculty members no other options except public aid. If wages were raised, there would be more money in the budget available to fund child care, job training, transportation assistance, and education. You know, Matt, you're being pretty quiet over there. Do you have any opinions on this? Oh, uh, yeah. Another thing... I'd like to, another reason I'm, I support the fight for 15 
is because of the outrageous lack of unions in this country. In the U.S., we have less than 9% of all of our private sector workers that are unionized. This is one of the lowest in the world, far behind Canada and Germany. In fact, we're actually closer to places like Mexico and South Korea. I mean, we need unions. Other, other than them getting you more money, unionized workers are 28% more likely to be covered by their employer by health care and 54% more likely for a pension. So, I mean, if you ever want to retire, I would say yes to unions too. I don't know about you guys. I think the main reason a ton of people are opposed to the Fight for 15 is because they are under the impression that by raising the minimum wage, the companies will not want to pay their workers 15 an hour and replace them with machines, which isn't true. You know, I strongly agree with you how that's not true. Companies, they think that, um, people think that companies are going to start to lay off their workers with that, and it's really not going to happen. People argue that McDonald's must pay their workers $15 an hour, and then they're going to threaten to downsize employees and replace them with touchscreen kiosks. It's not going to happen. In Australia, McDonald's already pays their workers $14.50, and unemployment hasn't even been an issue. Successful companies like McDonald's can easily afford to pay their workers livable wages without the fear of unemployment. I think that it's not that they can't afford it, it's that they don't want to, especially because when they can just get kiosks or robots and be done with it. You said how um, in McDonald's, at McDonald's in Australia, they already pay their workers fourteen fifty an hour. Well, what about Walmart here? Here in Illinois, the Walmart cashier only makes $9 to nine thirty an hour, and they have already started putting in kiosks. If you go to your local Walmart, they probably already have a machine where you can self-check out. I mean, I'm not saying it would happen, but even if fast food companies were to mechanize and lay off some workers, I think it would be better to have fewer better paying jobs rather than numerous jobs with wages you can barely live off of. Quality is better than quantity if unemployment ever became an issue, which I highly doubt. Yeah, I don't know how people are living uh, off this minimum wage. A study in Harlington, Texas, which is one of CBS's te 10 cheapest places to live in the United States, for just one adult to live, their average wage would have to be $9.45. With one adult and one child, that's $19.89, which is crazy because if there's two adults, one of them working, and two children, that means they must make at least $21.63 an hour. I mean, I don't know how people are living off eight twenty-five. You know, back to that unions, how you were saying that they should totally have unions, I definitely agree. You know, I think unions would be good for low-wage workers. Stephen Greenhouse thoroughly explained in his article in the Atlantic Magazine how back in the 1950s and 60s, unions improved labor conditions and wages for auto workers, steel workers, machinists, you name it. Over the decades, the power of labor movements has weakened. Union memberships have dropped over 11%. The labor weakness has ultimately led to wage stagnation and income equality. Fast food workers deserve to unionize, you know, like it's their right. Unionizing can help increase the chances of the $15 wage increase and hopefully keep increasing it as time goes on. And if inflation were to ever to happen, which I highly doubt, it would always, like, help increase if, like, that were ever to come to be an issue. Yeah, I, the union rates are so low because people aren't... Uh, people don't really know about them. The Atlantic did a report that shows that places like Walmart claim that they are bad and they show workers actual videos and make them sign stuff so that they will not join unions. And even if they do, if they do join unions, Walmart has been known to completely shut down the store that is trying to unionize so they get rid of the problem. More money earn means more money put back into the economy as people spend it. With $15 an hour, workers will have more money in their pockets. When workers have more money to spend, they spend it almost entirely in the local community on basic necessities like housing, food, clothing, and transportation. When consumer demand grows, businesses thrive, earn more profits, and create more jobs. We need workers to earn more money so they can spend more money and help get the economy running again. Yeah, I definitely think that... Um it's a big issue that 52% of fast food workers receive public assistance. Um, but I just think that that high of an increase for minimum wage definitely causes a lot of threats with our economy and even unemployment, like we mentioned before, with kiosks and other things like that. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have today. 
Um, tune in next week, and we will be talking about Donald Trump. <laughs>